Hey guys, we are back on the bandsaw today. Um, it's been a while, I apologize, but when I was replacing the bearings um, on the blade guides, I was pounding these center pins out, and when I did that, I broke the whole part. Right now, it's kind of held together, um, but it's very fragile. Um, so we are going to take on the, uh, the trivial challenge of welding cast iron. So we're gonna go over the welding table to show you how we're going to attempt at making this repair so I can get these new, uh, brand new bearings on for the blade guides so we can get the bandsaw back in order here in the metal shop. So let's head over to the uh, welding bench and see what we got. So we've got a section of the main body cleaned up a little bit for us to run some test beads on it so we can get our settings all nice and dialed in before we start doing the crucial repair because we only have one shot. Uh, let's go take a walk over the welder so I can show you how I've got this set up. Okay guys, we're over here at my stick welder and we'll start off with that I've got my electrode holder hooked up to DC electrode positive, otherwise known as reverse polarity. That's a bit of an older term, you won't run into it that often, but it's inconvenient when you do run into it and you don't know what it means. This rod is a brass welding rod designed for running cast iron and the box says you can either run it on AC or DC reverse polarity which is positive so we're gonna try doing it on DC so this box recommends that you run this rod at 60 to 100 amps so I'm thinking we're gonna start off at about 85 and we'll change it from there. Okay, let's weld. Okay. I'm going to show you what we learned doing our test beads and I'm glad we did them because you can see on these first few beads we started on the DC like we showed you and you can see they look pretty good and spatter is pretty minimal but these ones they just they didn't tie in I didn't have enough power I had my welder maxed up I turned this thing up all the way to 150 amps and we still were not getting good penetration so I decided to try it on AC. And then this was 150 amps on AC. We almost blew a hole through this quarter inch thick cast iron with these rods. So we've done these welds and we've got it set up on AC. And look at how much better that weld is. So much more tied in. But you can also see how much more spatter there is. But that's all right. And that weld was at under 100 amps. Talk about what you're doing. Okay guys, we're just gonna start preheating this part a little bit because you're actually supposed to preheat cast iron a little bit before you weld it because if you don't, it can actually crack. Even if you're not repairing a crack in cast iron, you're just welding it. If you heat it up, with just the welding rod, it can shock the metal and actually crack it. So we're doing the preheat twofold. Number one, to give us a bit more penetration with that rod, but also to try and hopefully prevent any uh, cracking that might occur. So we'll get back to you once we've got this heated up to our satisfaction.
Okay, so right now you can see I'm holding that laser right on the weld and it's 500 degrees. So this is the reason why we preheated it because if we had started out this metal would have been 50 degrees and when it, it would have jumped all up to 500 degrees and that what is what can cause your cracking. So since we got this thing up to probably about 250 by the time we were striking an arc, it made that jump a lot less. So hopefully that will prevent any cracking that we might have ran into. Alright guys, as you can see, we've got the finished part right here. We've ground this area down here. The weld didn't go all the way through. You can still see a little bit of the crack, but that's okay. It's held together now. We didn't um, grind down this one here because it's really not needed, but we're going for functionality here, making sure we get this part back together. So she's all fit and put back together. So make sure you give us a like, subscribe below to not miss any future videos. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Let me change my gloves here. We have this 18 tooth per inch raker blade from Grizzly Industrial, made in the USA. Super excited about this. Um, on one of the next videos, we're going to be installing this on the bandsaw, and we're going to start cutting. We've got a big project coming up that I want to get started this fall, and the bandsaw, making sure it cuts straight, is very critical for the upcoming build that we have going on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below. We appreciate you stopping by today, and we will see you on the next video.